Hey guys, what's up? It's Derp here. I am going over another video for the strategy, how to do wars, and I did the rostering video, I'll link that below um, in the comment or in the description. So once you have your roster set up, you have 10 groups to work with, right? So the super, super basics, you have to capture the points. The points are always going to be set up like this, right? They're always going to be from left of, from left to right. If you're looking out of fort, it's like reading a book. It's left to right, A, B, C. The, from the defender's vantage point, it's A, B, C from left to right. If you're looking from war camp to fort, it's C, B, A, right? It's backwards. So... The defenders want to protect these points for as long as possible. Anything over 15 minutes is good. Um, anything under about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, is kind of bad. The devs are trying to make it so it takes about 15 minutes, or what their their goal was to have points fall at about the 15 minute mark. So anything under 15 minutes, if you're a defender, losing all three of your points in, in under 15 minutes is a bad sign and holding them from for longer than 15 minutes is a good sign um for attackers if you can't get all three by 15 you're doing it slowly and that needs to improve if you're doing it quicker than 15 minutes you're doing a good a good job um, that's kind of the metric that you can use because that's how the devs have tried to design it right now we're based we're seeing 20 minute fort fights a lot of times unless there's just a huge skill gap then people will just end will have three minute wars and, and stuff right um if there's a huge huge skill gap and gear deficiency or the enemy or the defending team just rostered completely wrong and went a bunch of range um you will see these really short wars but usually the last you'll see like 10 minutes on the point phase and then 20 minutes in the fort right this is how how we're seeing a lot of the competitive companies do it but let's talk about attacks for a little bit. Your main objective is to get into the fort and capture the fort, right? Now, how do you do this? The The basic premise is pretty easy. You want to end up here capturing this flag in the middle of the fort. But you have to capture these three outside points first. Now, there's all kinds of tricky strategies you can do. There is split pushes where you could send, you know, a pretty common one is to split push as you send 10 you know 15 and then 25 but usually what ends up happening is that so there's this split push and what you're trying to do is you know, want to have your main army go to the point that you want to capture first and put keep as much pressure on there as possible so usually that's b you want to get b first because that makes it harder or you want to you could realistically you either want you could do there's two schools of thought so you either want to capture b first or you want to save b for last but i'll get into that later let's focus on the basics of split pushing or 50 versus 50 on the the main points so there's a split push i do not like this strategy anymore um to me this is just a waste of time uh the split push can work it usually fails because of many reasons and then you have the two point split where you basically 25 25 or you do you know you do 15 another common one is 15 35 um so you have one two three go to one one point you know i see a lot of people even doing this but that's the there's varying split pushes and you can kind of do that any any form of this is pretty much going to be the same right now i don't really like split pushing but she's divided it all up and then you push two to three points at a time the most common way to split push is to push three points at a time what you're seeing a lot now is a split push where you send one group off to a point and if there's nobody here defending this point and they're giving this up for free which is a very common defensive strategy you have them capture that point 
and then they they move around to the other point and put pressure here uh and then if they can capture that point for free as well then you have a 50 on 50 on b this is my favorite type of attack i don't even really consider this a split push it's more of just a 50 on 50 and you're trying to get the free cap but i'll get back into the rest of the video so that's your basic split push and then you try to get all three points with the split push you're going to have the 50 on 50 on one of these points no matter what you do um and then you have the 50 on 50 push which is actually my favorite so the 50 on 50 is basically you pick whatever point you want and you send all 50 to the, to that point um so that would be your entire army because usually what i'll do is try to rush b um just because it is the only time that you're going to be able to have all 50 of your people bond in at the same time and your whole army is there there's no offset respawns there's no mismatching timers there's no shenanigans going on with your timers um your entire army is already in position coming out of the gate right and you have a pretty even chance of getting to the point and if you're if your army is as good as their armies is and you've done all the rostering you've put the right people in and your army is as strong as their army there's a 50 50 chance you'll win that 50 man push right because that's just a straight up 50 versus 50 the better team's going to win and if your team wins that fight then there's things you could do to put yourself into a position where you can capitalize that and take b really quickly so i talked about the two main strategies for attack you have the split push and the 50 versus 50. the most common strategy for defending is to literally just take all 50 people from outside the fort they jump off of these little areas right here these are kind of your starting areas right here at the the tip of these little you know the fort um they'll and they'll send all 50 people to b right and what they'll do is they'll usually have like a spy group or two so say they'll say they're trying to protect c so they want to give up a they're just going to give it up for free so that they can kind of position here and what they'll do is they'll just fight right here and they'll have like you know maybe group 10 is their harass or maybe group 9 is like their kill team or group 8 is like a peel team they'll send group 8 over here to spy while everybody's over here and if nobody's there they come back and they peel for their back line and then if somebody if somebody's pushing c and it's only a group of five or if it's less than five this group will just run over here kill these guys real quick and then come back to the main ball um and they'll just defend b for indefinitely really and then that's one strategy another strategy is to give up a and you just out the rip will send like group you know six and they'll send like just two groups to kind of hang out over here and then everybody else just rushes to b um because what a lot of times people will do attackers will do is they'll do sne sneaky rotations and if you leave a group out here a group or two just on point that and one kind of rotates back and forth but one kind of stays there indefinitely what that does is it's going to make them it's going to force the attackers to break off 10 or more people to wipe you off that point and if there's too much pressure you could kind of just detach people as needed right you can just detach people from this little main ball on B. So, and then if B ever gets, you know, free, you just leave one person at one point, you know, have an anchor team, like your tank team, sitting on B and have everybody else rotate to C and you just flip it. That's why a lot of times they'll give up one of these side points because this rotation is super quick. But yeah, that's usually the like basic strategy. Another strategy that's for defense is just to kind of throw a point intentionally. Um, and then f make a force a 50 on 50 and rotate between two points quickly. So rotate between B and C as quickly as possible. Um, at that point, it's just keeping track of where your respawns are going and who's protecting. You want to have like a good group defending whatever point you don't want to lose. And you want to have a highly mobile group either want to have a tank team that just sits there 
and just literally does nothing until they get attacked, or you want to have like a, a peel team or flex team that has that's pretty mobile that can just dis, dis like uh, detach from the main ball and go over there to to kill whoever's there, um, and it can tell you what the numbers are. So if they get over there and they're like, hey, there's 15 people, then you know you need to send probably like seven, eight, and nine, right? to go wipe them out or what a lot of people will do is they'll send 20 over there just to make sure that it gets wiped and to tick it back down super quickly and then they'll just move everybody back right once the point has been captured but another strategy people will do is just how there's a split push what they'll do is they'll just send to protect against the split push the easiest way to protect against that is just to send two of your main ball teams so maybe like six and seven to those points. And they kind of just hang out there until you know where the rotations are coming. If you're trying to defend all three points at the same time, because that'll actually draw the fight out a lot longer than if you throw it. But there's a higher likelihood that you'll lose more than one point at a time because you're trying to defend more than one thing, right? So this is a defending all three points is way higher risk, way higher reward, because you can drag the fight out basically indefinitely um with that strategy but you have run a really big risk of getting kind of caught with your pants down and losing both points at once um so those are your two big defensive strategies for outside the fort uh usually it all starts with just sending a 50 man out um and then if you have if you notice like ticking going on You'll send a few teams to kind of go to that. What you'll or you send one team off to go, kind of spy which point you want to keep, or two teams to spy if you're trying to keep both. So there's the strategy of giving up, giving up one point, and then just defending two, or there's the strategy for defending all three, right? So if you're throwing a point, you might want to send one team here and then the rest will come out B. That's pretty simple. Um, and then just only fight the two-front war, right? Um, instead of fighting a three-front war. So the attacking war, you have split pushes, and then 50 versus 50. You're going to have to 50 versus 50 at some point. Actually, twice in the war, you're going to have to 50, 50 versus 50, unless you pull off a situation where you can capture two points at once. But usually you're going to have two 50 versus 50 fights. You're going to have one at the last point. So you're going to have a 50 versus 50 here. And then at C, and then you're going to have the 50, 50 and four. So for the attackers, you have your split push. You have your 50 versus 50. And then for split pushing, you have triple splits or double splits. Um, I prefer just doing a 50, 50 at the gate and then if you're running into a situation where you're not beating them 50 on 50, then you'll do a split push. You'll rotate into a split push. Um, I always have one group go out to, so it's like a 45 versus 50, really. One group go out to C or A and see which point I could get for free if I'm attacking. Uh, so on attack, I'll just do something like this. The number doesn't really matter. Don't pay attention to the numbers where I'm placing this stuff. And what will the, happen is they'll capture that point for free. Um, let's get into fort phase. So essentially, for once you have fort, once you're in fort phase, so all three of these points have been captured, and then you have the defenders against the attackers. Right, the attackers' main objective is to capture this flag. The defender's main objective is to make sure nobody gets nobody gets inside the fort and nobody captures their flag. It's pretty simple. One thing to note is that once fort phase happens, and this confuses a lot of people, the gates actually switch. So they go A, B, C from the fort side. I mean, from the war camp side, not the fort side. So whereas this is A point, right? So it looks like this. So you have A gate is C point, B gate stays B point, and then C gate is A point. And then I believe there's, it. I can't remember which one's D, which one's E. I think it goes A, B, C, D, E. 
uh, or no, it's A, B, C, D, E. So this would be D. So that's D gate, that's E gate. So some common acronyms for inside the fort is dirt. So this is the, the green areas are the dirt. And then you have the flag, which is the flag or point. So these green areas are called the dirt, flag, or point. And then you have the stage or respawns, which is this area, which will be red. So like this area where the respawns are happening. Or no, I'll have this be blue. And then you have hell, which is going to be in red, which is this area behind point. So it's stage. So we have dirt, stage, and hell, right? And then these areas up top are so these triangles, yeah, the like pink magenta triangles are upstairs or what some people call them as the rafters. I've heard rafters. I've heard, I've heard it called um, heaven or just upstairs. So that's some pretty common acronyms, right? We have dirt, point, or flag. So yeah, that's basically it. And then you have your gates, right? You have, so that's the basic fort layout. So again, this is kind of, I'll go over the points. A point, B point, C point. And this is all in Windsward. I'm kind of showing Windsward. It's one of the most common, commonly fought over uh, forts. So this is the anatomy of a fort, right? You have your points, so A, B, and C. You have your gates, A, B, and C and it flips once you get into fort phase. You have your point inside fort or your flag. You have your heaven or upstairs. You have your dirt, you have hell, and then you have your stage. And then you just usually say upstairs front, upstairs back, front rafters, back rafters, front heaven, back heaven. I think rafters is kind of my favorite. Um, another common um, area people call for is road and what they mean by road is this area so road i will make i'll leave white so road is this area in between the points and it kind of intersects on b there um then you have bunkers which is these this area in between so right here in front of the bunkers so I'll make bunkers uh, black. So yeah, first things first, anatomy of a fort. I know this look, all looks kind of crazy, but you have your point slash flag. So that's, you have your points and you have your gates. Yeah, so point slash flag, dirt, Stage, respawns, hell, upstairs, heaven, rafters. I would pick one of these and stick to it. Uh, road is the road. Bunkers is bunkers. Point is point. Gates are gates. So that's kind of the anatomy of a fort, right? Um, whether you're on attack or defense, it doesn't really matter. Everybody's going to be calling it the same thing. I would just familiar, familiarize with yourself with this and have everybody whatever you decide to call everything 
uh, is up to you. You can come up with your own creative name, so, you know, to throw people off. Um, but it helps to have kind of a universal lingo, because if you have to pull in mercs, then they're going to know exactly where you're talking about. Um, I would try to familiarize with yourself with this, get everybody in your company familiarized with this. That way they know exactly where to fight and when to fight there. Um, and then the war camp is obviously where the attackers spawn. Fort is where the defenders spawn. Um, now let's get into some attacking strategy. I know this video is kind of dragging on already, but we're almost at the end. Stick with me. So one strategy for attacking is just to slow it down. If you have over 10 minutes and you're getting into fort phase, I would say if you have like 15 minutes left, you're going to want to you're going to want to make sure and kind of slow it down a little bit. One common strategy is just just to kind of slow it down a little bit, especially if you get in with like in under 10 minutes. Just take some time and have all of your healers, your ice gauntlet, void gauntlets, your fire staffs, your blunderbuss, anybody with any kind of range go through and break down all of their war horns and their and their gates. So all of the front, at least in the front, right? So the most important ones are going to be these two on the inside. So all of these little targets are war horns, right? So you have like three war horns here, three war horns here, the one above the gate, three war horns here, three war horns here, the one above the gate. Um, I think there's a war horn here. Uh, so then you have all these war horns right here. Just have your range. Just do a sweep. Just start here. If if C is the last point that's fallen or the last point that falls, so C falls last. What a lot of people will do is they'll just have their army, the whole army, go here until all of these are dead. Gates down, war horns are all down. Then they'll move the, their whole army over here. Gates down, war horns are down. Then they'll move their whole army over here. Gates down over here. And then what they'll do is while they move, they'll put people into like anchor teams into position, right? So group one will stay here and make sure the gate doesn't get repaired. Group two will stay here and make sure the gate doesn't get repaired. And then this whole army will try to push in through this last gate. And then what a lot of people will do is they'll break off. So say you're, you have a har like the harass team will kind of break off depending on how you have it set up. So if you have two group healers, you'll have a group healer come over here, a group healer over here, and say group two is your main tank group with your third AOE healer. They'll stay, it'll split off like that. And then you'll have like any ranged that's in the, the, um, the harass team split off to go to the back and then you'll split off like groups eight and nine like a peel team and a harass team to come into the back as well so you have these like nine will be on d 10 will be on e this is just an example right um that's a pretty common strategy another common strategy would be to leave like two groups behind so maybe you have like one and two three and four and then the rest are here and then nine like so basically five through eight are here and then nine or ten or nine and ten are here right and then they all push in and you're all pushing in together um another common strategy and that's like what I, this is kind of what i like to call like the overload strategy so say you got rid of these and you just did this so this is overloading one side so and then what you want to do once you're inside is you want to break all these war horns that are left um your ranged are up here your range should be probably shooting be shooting these buy stations that are up here these little happy faces are buy stations because those are how they get their gates back up that's how where they get their repair parts that's where they buy their potions that's where they're buying all their stuff your range can kill those once those are down they can get back to killing healers they can also make sure that any gates stay down um but that's a little bit into high level strategy too. But so that's kind of like the slow method and then you kind of force your way in. Um, another method is to, it has a similar setup. 
So I'll get rid of these. Um, but what they'll do is they'll take their main force. So say C is the last gate that falls. They take all of their forces except for... So they take their whole ball and they just try to crash in through this gate. They take their whole army and they just try to bust in. Right? So what this does is any ranged is going to be attacking these ore horns anyway until you guys get in the gate. But all, the, all of these attackers are going to just try to force their way into point. And then once they get into point, they start breaking everything. Right? Once you get into point, you start killing everybody. You start breaking everything. The war horns, buy stations, kill all the players. You know, you just get in there and start causing mayhem. And then while that's happening, on as people start respawning, that's when you start getting people into position. Right? These players, you want to kind of, like, 9 and 10, you'd want to send to the back. Or, like, 9, like, 8 and 9, you'd want to send to the back anyway. So, like, as this is happening, as your main ball of everybody is breaking is breaking off you want to send so nine and eight and nine would then come around and get into position in the back and basically just try to meet the main ball and push in through the back right so they're trying to pinch in through here and pinch these defenders and kill kill everybody right so then you have Forward, you have basically inward pressure into the fort from one entire side. And if that happens and these guys are good, what what will end up happening is this, this army will basically, they're going to hit the oh shit button and they're going to stack up here, right? And then you have these two groups coming in through the back and now you have a big pinch, right? These guys are basically just holding them in place while these guys get in. And then these guys come in and wipe as many of the healers and ice gauntlet, void gauntlets and everything that they can. And once that happens, this group pushes in. And from there, it's just a matter of controlling respawns and staying inside the fort for as long as possible, right? Um, breaking all their shit, killing all their all their healers, making sure that you wipe, you're wipe wiping respawns. Um, which kind of leads me into the next, the next thing. Where do respawns happen? So... I'll get rid of all this stuff. Um, we went over the gates. So, in the fort, the respawns happen here on what's called the backstage. So, there's two locations for respawns. There, if I zoom in, so if you look at these stairs, so there's stairs right here, there's stairs right here, and then there's a stage right here where the buy stations are. There, these are the front stages, and that's where the other, where the stairs are, right? Like right here. And there's more respawns right there. When on it for attackers, you want to occupy these spaces every time there's a respawn or as close to the time when the respawn happens. So every time, if there's five seconds until the respawn happens, you want to go kill everybody on that stage, make sure you have as many bodies on that stage so when respawns come in, they die immediately. Because if you kill them immediately, now they are just went from being a fresh respawn to a 45 second, or a 35 to 45 second respawn, right? So for attackers, you want to kill these, kill these respawns as much as possible and as often as possible. Um, for defenders, you want to make sure that these areas stay clear. Uh, so this kind of leads me into to defense. So on defense, you want to... The easiest strategy that I know of is basically you have one anchor group on each gate. So let's just say that's one, two, and three, right? So you have one anchor group on each gate, and there's one strategy where basically everybody else in your army... So your harass team of healers and, and ranged players will be up here. So basically anybody with fire staff, bow, musket, all that stuff kind of stays up on these front, either the front or the back, like decks. So they want to stay up there upstairs um, so that they can hit attackers that are coming in. 
so the attackers are coming in from wherever, right? Um, so this is one of the com most common defensive strategies. You have your attackers kind of coming in um, from all over the place, right? So you want to keep your, your range up here able to still hit them while they're outside the fort. So, so this helps. This does a lot to slow them down coming in. Um, and if you have muskets up here, one common strategy is to for muskets to sit up at the front and they'll still focus. So like as the, the defenders start spawning in, this musket will move over here. If they see a big respawn here, they'll say, hey, they're all respawning C. So they'll re relay that to the shot caller, big respawn on C and they'll start killing healers and squishies as they respawn in. So it's kind of like a respawn camping with the enemy team, right? So as they're spawning in, muskets, especially if you have full musket teams, and they call a big respawn wave, your muskets and bows can sit up on the these, you know, the ramparts and just shoot the shit out of people that are respawning in, right? Um, so that's a big thing defenders do. Um, and then what will end up happening is, so say this is a, basically a big ball, like everybody except for one, two, and three and group 10. So, you know, four through nine essentially just goes here in the middle and they just rotate between right here. They just rotate that way. It, it's very effective. Um, you have one, two, and three stay in place. They tell you how many people are coming in. So if this gate gets overloaded, they, like, say the attackers overload this gate, the, whoever's in group three will tell your shot caller, hey, they're coming in over here. And your main ball will just come over here to stop this. Everybody else kind of stays in place. Unless you need backup, then you could call, like, what a lot of people will do is they'll call a shift, and they'll basically just have this person come to assist and then these guys will kind of get in here and then hopefully that's been wiped by the time that these guys start trying to push in and if you need to you could call a shift where these guys go here these guys go here and then these guys might try to get in but then everybody resets after this is wiped right um so that's one common strategy there's, I'll do a quick recap. There's two common attack strategies for points, and that's split pushing or 50 versus 50. Um, you could do split pushing in a triple split or a double split. That's up to you. Uh, my preferred method is to start out with a 50 on 50 if I start losing that, or a 45 versus 50, and I'll send one, like a peel team or the kill team to go capture whatever point is free, if there is a free point. Um, and like, for example, I send group nine to go to A, and that point isn't free, then I'll just have them go over to C. And if that point also isn't free, then they just come back to the 50 on 50. Uh, if either one of those points with A or C are free, then they capture that point as quickly as possible. Uh, and then they get back to the 50 on 50. At that point, I'll have most of my army spawning at the point I just captured, and then I'll keep my point tank groups spawning at war camp and going to point, whatever point I want to I want to capture. Uh, so usually that's B. So I'll have my point groups spawning at war camp and going to B, and then I'll have everybody else going spawning at the point I just captured and going to B and trying to get B next. You could always switch that up. That is up to you. I'll go over why and when and how to do rotations and all that stuff in another video uh, for defenses on point phase it's pretty basic strategy send you there's kind of the similar thing you either split defense or you 50 versus 50 defense or on the split there's two different versions you can do a single uh double split or a triple split defense um the most common is just to send 45 people to b and then send one group to kind of on the sides either between a or c um, and they give up one point for free so they'd either give up a or c for free and then use the quick rotations between b and c to stall out the enemy for as long as possible um, or you could try to do the triple split defense to try to keep all three points 
The double split is kind of my preferred, and I usually run that with 45 out of B gate. And then let's just go straight to B and hold off B for as long as possible. And then I have one team that goes out to either A or C, whatever point I'm defending. And they will, if there's nobody coming to attack them, then they will uh, come back to the main ball. Because I'll, they're not attacking that point yet. And that team, I'll just have them on watch the entire game. And if they see anybody ticking up points on and pressure on what the point, the side point that we want to keep, I'll send them back. If they say there's too much to handle, then they'll call more people over to help them. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple. And then you basically just kind of bounce back and forth between B and C for as long as possible. Uh, if you're a defender, never try to give up B first. Um, losing B first makes rotations very, very difficult. And if you do lose B first, you might as well just give up another one of the side points because otherwise you run a very large risk of losing the other two at the same time. And now your army is all split up all over the map. Um, so if you do, or if you're ever in the unfortunate circumstance where you do lose, lose B immediately, um, just pick A or C and send all of your respawns to A or C. Every, everybody in the whole army goes to A or C, and you just try to turtle up on that point for as long as possible. Um, I'll get into some more detailed defenses and how you can do that in another video, um, but let me get into the fort, fa fort phase recap. So for fort phase, there, again, there's two, there's for defenses, there's two different types of defenses. There is one, and I'll kind of go over this again really quickly with visuals because I'm not sure if I went over it. Um, there's the one defense where you have your anchor groups at each gate. So you have your anchor groups at each gate, and then you basically move this main ball around from here to here, wherever you need it, right? This is a very easy defense because these other seven groups can rotate really quickly and usually are six groups because then you want all of your ranged cape players, so bows, muskets, and sometimes even healers. Bows, muskets, fire staffs mainly kind of go up here and they watch the respawns and rotations and kill off respawns and rotations, especially healers, as much as possible. This is the same for every defense. Um, the best places to post up are here on one of these four pillars, that's where you're going to have the most visibility and you can have the call rotations quickly. Um, so for the ranged muskets and bows and, and fire staffs and stuff, you're going to want to kind of stay up there. They're going to call for the respawns so that your main ball can get into position at the, about the same time that the, res the enemy respawns are coming in. Um, and then there's another strategy where you kind of do it another sneaky way where you break your so say you have one, two, three, right? And then you have six other teams. You'd put like three teams here and then three teams here. And what group two would do is play kind of soft. And you let the attackers come in through. So group three would be playing kind of soft. You have your, your groups back here kind of playing in the dirt more. And what ends up happening is wherever the... This is a little bit more advanced strategy. So wherever these attackers are coming in, say these attackers come in here, now they're surrounded by three group or a bunch of people. Your main, your entire main ball's here, and say they try to push in all three at the same time. You have three teams here that can fight both ways, and if they try to push in here as well, you have three teams here that can fight both ways as well. Um, this is a little bit more advanced, and then if they need to retreat, they could just go upstairs, right, to protect. They're already in position to protect the the front respawns. So even if they do make it back here, so say these guys make it back here and you guys manage to wipe these guys, at least your front respawns are safe. That's a little bit more of an advanced strategy. I think for people who are just starting out, I think the best strategy, in my opinion, is to leave it with your three anchor groups playing on the gates themselves, trying to stall people out as much as possible. And then you just have the one big group that 
moves back and forth, right? So this is my preferred strategy for, especially for people. If you're working with a lot of people who are who are new on defense, then this would be my preferred strategy. You have the main ball because even if they break in, say say you have people break in through the back, back here, and they get onto the stage where your back respawns are, you can always just break off like your kill teams to come back here and clean them up, right? You just send your your kill team and peel team to go wipe this stage really quickly, and then these guys can still move about where they need to. Um, now on attack, I did the, it's kind of a similar strategy, but there's the overload where you have your anchor groups. So now you're on attacking and you have the defenders here, right? So a quick recap. And what you want to do is you want to send two groups to the back gate. You have your anchors in place and then you have your big group of attackers all push in from one side and you overload it. So these guys would push in from one side and then these two groups in the back would try to meet up at the same. So if you have a group of defenders here and they are overloading because they know that you have a big group here, you still have a group putting pressure in from this side and this side. And what you want to try to do is get these two groups to meet up with this big main ball that includes your main your anchor team and then if that doesn't work you leave your anchor team in place and then switch it right and you just do a quick reload because that way what ends up happening is you still have now what ends up happening is you have this group overloaded this group's weak this group's weak and if these two groups plus this big ball, and if these guys could keep enough pressure on this gate, it's going to take them a long time to get over here. And what ends up happening is when these guys come in here, you have these guys push in and these guys push in at the same time to stall these out, and then these guys move forward, right? And then you have a situation, preferably, that looks like this, right? So that's the overload. Um, then there's like a pretty simple equal pressure like attack where you basically leave a pretty even distribution of players all over the map all over each side so it'd be right so two four six eight and then you have seven and eight would be the rotations right so seven and eight would be the two teams that rotate. And then group 10, you split the healers off to one on each side, the AOE healers, and your range come around through the back. Or they're fighting, having a shootout with these guys up here, one of the two. Um, and you have these guys overload this way. So you could have them have four teams pushing in middle um, and pushing an equal, equal pressure because then if you rotate these two out, to here, you could kind of rotate these or even to the back or to whatever side you want. So I'll just kind of leave these as like the attacker. Um, so you would have these guys meet up over here or then you could switch up the rotation to be over there. You could switch up the rotation to be over there. It's a little bit safer. That's the safer push, um, but it's gonna take a little bit longer to get in. Um, but either, no matter how you wanna do it, Again, you kind of want to make sure that all those war horns are down in the front. So say the say the attackers or for my cat, clear comms kitty. Um so say these these things are the or I'll just do it again. So as the attacker, one of your big things is making sure that all their war horns and buy stations are down. So buy stations are the skulls. War horns are these guys. At least they're forward, forward war facing war horns. You want to make sure that all their forward facing war horns are down. If you're getting into the fort as an attacker with under ten minutes left, you don't have time to mess around with the war horns. You're just going to want to try to brute force your way in, break down all the gates, and then try to take the point. Right? If you're getting under with more fifteen minutes or more, you want to make sure to take the time to take your main ball 
from point to point killing these and then when you when you first get in you want to want to make sure that those are down and then break all their buy stations they have two more buy stations up here um so get in break all this stuff and then yeah, I'll have all of your respawns trying to take point, right? Um, but yeah, that's about it. I will uh, make a more in-depth strategy about rotations, how to call rotations, when to call rotations, when to send people to, to respawn points, that kind of stuff. Um, if you find yourself stalling out or getting pushed back to war camp, how you can resolve that situation. But that's a that's going to be a longer video, so I kind of want to make sure cut this off here. This has already been like an hour. Uh, yeah, you guys have a wonderful night.